In this video, we start the study of the deformation of a circular shaft caused by torsional moment or torque. Here is a circular solid shaft. From the side, it looks like a rectangle. To help visualize the deformation later, let me put grids on it. Notice here, each grid can be considered as a rectangle with all four right angles, 90 degree angles. Also, let me draw a line here to indicate the initial position of this point on the surface of this shaft. Now, if I apply external torques along the axial axis of this shaft, we want to know how this will deform this shaft. But first, let me make several assumptions. We will assume that during the deformation, the length of this shaft will remain unchanged. The straight lines that I draw along the axial direction will still remain straight. And also, the cross sections of this shaft will remain circular. So after deformation, the initial rectangular grid has now become the parallelogram shape. And we know that shape change or the change from the right angles is characterized by the shear strain gamma. And also, this red line that I drew earlier has moved from its initial position to this current position, twisted by an angle of phi. And this is known as the angle of twist. Now we're going to try to characterize the shear strain and angle of twist during this deformation. Let's look at an arbitrary axial position x. At this position, located inside this shaft, is a disk of thickness of dx. Within this disk, if we look at an arbitrary radial position rho measured from the center of the disk, and if we focus on a segment located at this location, imagine we carve this segment out from this disk and we zoom in on it. Again, this is the radial position rho, and here is the thickness of the disk dx. Before deformation, this angle here can be considered to be a 90 degree angle. After deformation, the front plane has twisted to the left relative to the back plane. And now, this radial line has moved to the left by a small angle, d phi. And also, this angle now has changed from the 90 degree angle. And we know that this angle change from the original 90 degree angle is the shear strain gamma. If we look at this small length of arc, S, we realize that this small length of arc can be evaluated both by rho times d phi as well as dx times gamma. Therefore, from this equation, gamma equals to rho times d phi over dx. Within the same cross section, d phi over dx is a constant. However, it will change at a different x location. Therefore, from this equation, we can derive the relation that gamma, the shear strain, is proportional to the radial location. And since, according to the Hooke's law, that tau, the shear stress, equals to g times gamma, g being the modulus for rigidity, therefore, Tau and gamma also has a proportional relation. Therefore, tau is also proportional to the radial position rho. Therefore, if we look at a cross section at a specified location x, it has a radius of constant c, and the arbitrary radial position is represented by variable rho. And since we derived earlier that the shear stress tau and the radial position rho is proportional to each other. Therefore, shear stress develops proportionally with rho, with the maximum shear stress tau max occurring at the outside of this shift at the position that rho equals to c, the radius.
Therefore, based on this proportional relation, the shear stress at any given arbitrary radial position rho divided by rho equals to tau max over c. Tau max is a constant. Therefore, tau, again, the shear stress developed at an arbitrary radial position rho equals to rho over c times tau max. The question is, what is tau max? Don't forget, by definition, shear stress is force over unit area. Therefore, for a differential area dA on this cross-section, the shear stress at this point multiplied by dA equals to a small differential force dF. And we can calculate the moment caused by this force about 0, 0.0, which equals to the magnitude of the force times the moment arm. In this case, the moment arm is rho. And that equals to rho times tau times dA. And since tau as a function of rho equals to rho over c times tau max, as we derived earlier, this becomes this. And if we integrate the differential moment about 0, 0.0 over the entire cross-sectional area, and that must be the total internal torsional moment at this cross-sectional area Tx. And since we learned from statics course that this term here is the polar moment of inertia, Jo, therefore, we can derive that tau max equals to Tx, which is the internal torsional moment at this cross-sectional area at location x, times C, the radius, divided by Jo, the polar moment of inertia. And the shear stress and any arbitrary rho position equals to Tx times rho over Jo. And that is known as the torsion formula. For a circle with a radius of C, the polar moment of inertia about the center is 1 half times pi times C to the fourth power. For a ring with outer radius of CO and inner radius of CI, the polar moment of inertia about its center point O equals to 1 half times pi times CO to the fourth power minus CI to the fourth power. Again, review statics if you are not sure what polar moment of inertia is. If we look at a volume differential element at this location, According to our stress analysis, shear stress develops on this surface as shown. But according to the complementary property of shear, it must develop on the other three sides as well. And if you recall, this is our axial direction. And this is why a wood stick, when twisted, will split open like this. This is because shear stress will also develop along its axial direction and wood has a lower capability to withstand shear stress along its axial direction. Let's look at this example. For this uniform solid shaft with radius of C, at this particular cross section, the internal torsion is T. We need to determine the radius of the core C prime of the material that resists half of T. If you recall, when we were deriving the torsion formula, we integrated the moment across the entire cross-sectional area and equate that to the total internal torsional moment T. Here, we're going to use a similar approach. We define a differential element area to be the ring located at radial position rho with thickness of d rho. Therefore, the area of this ring equals to the circumferences multiplied by the thickness 2 pi rho times d rho. Any point on this ring has the same radial position, therefore the shear stress is the same determined by the torsion formula to be T rho over J O. Here, please be careful that J O here is the polar moment of inertia of this entire cross-sectional area, which equals to 1 half times pi times C to the fourth power. Therefore, tau equals to this. Shear stress multiplied by the area gives us force. and um, we can find the moment of this force with respect to 0, 0.0 equals to the force times the moment arm, in this case, rho. And then we integrate this differential moment within the inner core from 0 to rho equals to C prime. 
And this total moment is the moment resisted by the inner core, and that has to be half of t. So from this equation, we can solve for c prime to be 0.841 c. Now I want you to look at this answer and try to understand the implication here. Do we always need to use a solid shaft to resist a torsion? Let's look at this example. For this composite shaft subjected to multiple external torques, we need to determine the absolute maximum shear stress developed inside this shaft. Now, don't forget when we use the torsion formula, the T here is always the internal torsional moment, which is a function of position. Therefore, that's the first thing we need to determine, the internal torsional moment. So we start with the free body diagram draw the unknown support torque at the fixed support at point A. As you can see, I draw it to be counterclockwise about the x-axis because that's the default positive moment. Therefore, the resultant moment about the x-axis equals to Ta minus 100 plus 60 minus 40 equals to zero. Therefore, Ta equals to positive 80 newton meter. And then we're going to use the method of sections to determine internal torque. We're going to section three times. You should be very familiar with this procedure already. We first section between A and B, exposing the internal torque TAB, again drawn in counterclockwise direction. Do the moment equilibrium about the x-axis and solve TAB to be negative 80 newton meter. Section between B and C, exposing internal torque TBC, moment equilibrium, TBC equals to 20 newton meter. Lastly, section between C and D, exposing internal torque TCD, moment equilibrium, TCD equals to negative 40 newton meter. Construct an internal torque diagram to show how the internal torque changes with position X. As you can see, within AB, the maximum torque is 80 newton meter. Within CD, the maximum torque is 40 newton meter. But because AB and BD has different cross-sectional area, therefore we need to calculate the absolute shear stress for both first in order to determine what is the absolute maximum shear stress in this composite shaft. So for AB, according to the torsion formula, the maximum shear stress is 99.5 kilopascal. For BD, again, according to the torsion formula, the maximum shear stress is 398 kilopascal, which is bigger than the maximum shear stress within AB. This is because the shaft BD has a smaller cross-sectional area, and that's the absolute shear stress within this shaft.